good morning good morning it is thursday i got it right this time <laughs> i think <laughs> oh my gosh um i am a little behind my schedule i was really into some good studying this morning before i leave the house i like to do me some meditation and some reading and I listen at the motivational YouTube channels. I love technology because <clears throat> it's so much that it puts like right at our fingertips. But it was a thought that I was, I've been hearing in various videos and it really, it struck me. Like it made me really look at myself and be like, wow, like, okay. Um, decisions choices they are very very important we are who we are we are where we are based on our choices and our decisions what you wear how you look where you work what you drive where you live it is all based on decisions that you have made for your life even the route you take to work <laughs> it was funny sometimes you're driving you go a certain way or you have a regular route and then you decide you know what? I'm gonna go this way this morning and then you get stuck in traffic and there's a big accident and you there's 30 minutes to an hour then you get mad. Why are you mad? That was your decision to change your route. <laughs> Don't get angry at the accident. Don't get mad at the person driving or walking across the street. That was your decision. And I think the problem in life is we as adults do not want to be responsible. We want to pass blame because it's easy and we don't have to take accountability for what happens in our life we always want to be able to blame somebody else we always want to be able to point that finger but as they said realize that you pointing that finger but you got some fingers pointing back at you <clears throat> it's a whole lot of sayings y'all <laughs> but what's important is to understand that your decisions determine the life that you live. Your decisions determine the success that you attain. I cannot, and we've all done it. I know I have. <clears throat> there comes a point in life where you cannot continue to blame your mama your daddy, your uncles, your grandmama names for where you are in life. Once you realize that that is what you're doing is you're putting blame and you're putting responsibility on someone that it does not belong to. Once you get to that point in life and then you make a decision <laughs> And a choice to take responsibility for where you are. That's when you're ready for change and your life will dramatically, dr drastically. Y'all have to excuse me. English was not my major <laughs> change. There are times when growing up you know you have kids in certain situations certain home life and they see a lot they deal with a lot I mean I know some children have dealt with things that I'm 45 and some seven-year-olds done been through some stuff that I'll I can't even imagine going through and it's sad but it happens but as that child grows up that child will then have the decision, 
have the choice whether or not they're going to live that same type of life, a worse life, <clears throat> a worser life, or a better life. And it's all up to that individual. And I can definitely, like I said, these are my lock theories, but I can say for a fact where I work in the career that I'm in, possible icy roads ahead, y'all. Gotta pay, pay attention. I listen to my truck. It protects me. <laughs> um... There are kids who have had OMG. You don't even want to imagine the lives some of these children have had, some of the things they've dealt with and they've had to encounter. It it will make a grown man fall to his knees and cry. And those kids come out of it. They get in a good home. They go to school or they get a trade or a career and they become successful and they truly do not look back. Some kids are in and out of foster care, in and out of group homes, but they come there and straight A students taking uh, biochemistry at, in ninth grade and straight A's going to college prep courses and they're not allowing what they're going through to affect them. Now, if kids can do that, come on now, what are we doing as adults? Why are we sitting around making excuses? If anybody should be able to use their life as an excuse, it should be those kids. Mama's on drugs, daddy's on drugs, or daddy and mama ain't never been around. They've been bounced around from family to family until the family got tired and the family decided to call the state or call the city and now they're in this, the system. It's, it's, and, and they still, and, and mind you now, you get some who they're abused by their parents, whichever way, because it's, Anyway, a child being abused is just disgusting. They're abused, whether it's physically, sexually, mentally, emotionally. They're abused by their natural parent. Then they get into a foster home, and then the foster dad abuses them, or the mom, or a cousin abuses them. Then they're taken out of that home. Then they're thinking... They meet this other couple who wants to adopt them. And they're like, yeah, finally. Then they're abused in that home. Like, it's ridiculous. And still, those kids come out and make something of themselves. They don't sit around, well, I was abused as a kid. I was abused. There are, nobody loved me. They don't do that. They do not make themselves out as the victim. And that's why I say it is up to each individual person. I'll hear your story. I'll sympathize with you because we all got one. We all got a background. We all got a past. We all have some sort of dysfunction in our family life. Believe me, no family is perfect. We all got crazy. It's just different kinds of crazy. But we all have crazy. We all have ghetto. <laughs> it's just a different style. It's just a different race and a different face. But it's all the same. And it's all embarrassing. It all makes you sulk and uncomfortable with who you are. And you have to make the decision as an individual not to allow where you've come from to affect who you are and where you're going. I have so many associates and friends that are in certain um, professions 
in entertainment, acting, music, and they have stories too. They don't come from perfect families. They got, some of them got some traumatic stories. But look at, they're doing their passion. You gotta stop making excuses. We must, we have to. You can't be 55 years old crying on the phone still talking about you didn't have no daddy growing up. Come on, bro. It's, you got to grow up. There comes a time where we got to take responsibility. Okay, I didn't have a dad, but you know what? I'm going to be there for my kids. I'm going to make sure my kids never have to say that. Okay? Get with crazy. You mate with crazy. Now you got to leave crazy. But you still, as a father, you still can have a place in your child's life. Sorry, ladies, but some of us are, yeah, you crazy. Y'all just stone cold crazy. <laughs> That's a whole nother video, though. Give my book to Debbie Mom, and you'll find out. They're, they crazy. No way of sugarcoating it. Some women, y'all just crazy. We all have it in us. But some of y'all just let it rule and let it rain. Don't hide it. Y'all wear it proud. <laughs> but there's no excuse. You can always make something better of yourself and of your next generations. Me. My mom messed, okay, you know, messed up in life. We, you know, have God bless us with some good men, some good relationships. I mean, providers. It don't work for whatever reason. It takes two, but, you know, we adult enough, we, we smart enough to know who was at fault for real. And who had the gist of the <laughs> dysfunction. <clears throat> and so... I grew up without a father in the home. We, my mom never worked. She was on the county until I was graduating from high school. And she realized, I don't know how it is now, but children become a certain age, your check is cut. So, she knew she wasn't going to get that part of that money. So, she had to get something. So, she um, got a job, finally. I think I was in the 12th grade when my mom started working. And, but during high school, ninth, I mean, all the way in school, I, I, can't, I can't even remember ever. But, I was never the stylish kid I never had styles and name brands that was not in our vocabulary <laughs> like I don't even I was smart enough to know you know how some people like I didn't even know we was poor well I knew we was not balling <laughs> maybe I was just a smart kid but <laughs> I had it was no question in my mind we had some financial difficulties. <laughs> the writing was on the wall. The proof was in the pudding. <laughs> now, my mama was not balling out of control and high rolling. Okay? So, um, I had to wear what I could wear. We, we had a swap meet in the city where I grew up. Inglewood, whoop, for life. What y'all know about Inglewood? <laughs> Always up to no good. <laughs> um, and we go to the Inglewood swap meet, and that's where I would get my clothes for the school year. <laughs> she, I went to Alabama. My family's from Bama. Shout out to Bama. 
and she bought me four or five well I, I think my grandfather bought them because grandpa that man always had money <laughs> always <laughs> um he uh they bought me four or five skirts right because that's another video i'm gonna do i was raised in a religion in a belief that women did not and were not supposed to wear pants so that's a whole nother conversation piece see y'all i'm full of conversation i'm full of conversation and i got theories on all of it <laughs> but um so everything i wore was skirts 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 dresses 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 okay um and <laughs> she bought they bought me five skirts right all different colors but it was the same skirt <laughs> i wish i had some pictures of them skirts y'all I, I will never forget them skirts because that's all i had throughout the entire school year through my entire high school year because i was about this big wet <laughs> so um i didn't i was i didn't ever grow so I never really needed new clothes, okay? Which was a bad thing on my part because I had to continue to wear those skirts. <laughs> so I had those skirts and I had, I, never, I had a pink, hot pink one, a green one, a blue one, a burgundy, like a purple one, I think. <laughs> and they had like a, a, a it was made like a corduroy material and it had like a pleat in the front that looked like you know slits like they call them splits but it was a slit split without the split it looks like one but it wasn't one and it was in the front and they was all like that right so you know i was excited because shoot i got some clothes right i ain't got to wear the other ones because i had you know some other stuff that was kind of uh this was just plain there was no patterns no flowers and all that so i had those skirts and then we would go and she would get us our swap meet always had t-shirts and you could get like five for ten dollars or three for five or you know um, ten for twenty something like that it was always some type of special so every year we knew me and my brother i had a brother that lived with me <laughs> We knew we was going to get us some t-shirts. So we go and we could pick whatever the sale was. We could pick that many um, t-shirts. So I knew the color skirts I had. So I would pick and match so that I could switch up <laughs> with those five skirts. <laughs> Oh my God! I can't. You know they say when you go through stuff, they say you gonna laugh about this later. It was not funny then. It was not. But to think back now, ooh, y'all, that was funny. Like, <laughs> ooh, I was, ooh, I was so like, man. I mean, you see your girlfriends and your homies coming in, and they be decked out in style, like you know what I'm saying. And see, I went. I was from Inglewood. I don't know how your school was, but Inglewood was Inglewood, like city of champion. You know what I'm saying? Like balling. Like kids, my parents worked for the state and the government. You know, they wasn't on the government. They worked for the government. You know, so they had it. They was get dropped off in Rolls Royces and limousines and. You know, because the, the, the junior high I went to, well, elementary junior high was La Tijera. Tigers! Woo! And um, they, that area, woo, real ritzy, right? And so, I mean, I had kids coming in limousines and, you know, Porsche and Merced. I mean, stuff that I, I knew nothing about. My mom, we walked. <laughs> and when she did get a car, it was a, let's see, I was in school in what, 1980s, during that time, went to high school, 
the late 80s, graduate in 91. So, um, when I was in school, it was in the 1980s, 90s, right? Well, my mom's car was a 1860-something Dodge Dart, I think, and it was brown. <laughs> we used to call it Roach. <laughs> It, and uh, how she got that car, my granddad had a friend who had it and I think just like literally gave it to him almost for free. I think my granddad must have paid something and gave it to my mom because, you know, grandpa and granny, they always had. Um, they would help us. But, you know, my mom, she and that's another thing when folks trying to decisions, you know, if somebody want to help you, it's your decision whether or not you take the help. Or do you just struggle, you know? She gonna make it on her own. I guess she gonna prove, you know, she can... I don't know what... I don't know, y'all. But um, we got that car, so she was drive. It didn't have heat, so in the wintertime, we had blankets in the car, which is kind of cool as a kid, you know, especially during the holidays. We have um, our blankets, and we would have our little cups with our hot chocolate, and we go around looking at the Christmas lights and stuff like that. <laughs> So, I mean, we had, we made fun out me. And that's the thing. I've always been able to use my imagination. Me and my brother, we always played games. We kept ourselves going as kids. We kept our, that's why we had a happy childhood because I didn't really dwell on what I didn't have. I kind of looked at what I wanted and what I saw for my future. And man, I hear that a lot in motivation. It's, you know, it's your thoughts. It's, you know, seeing the things the way you want to see it is faith you know it's believing and i my life is really done some great stuff by that um and i know it had a lot to do with how my childhood thoughts were and growing up but um yeah so you know i i had to you know we, we she would drop us she wouldn't drop us off in front of school because she knew we you know be a little embarrassed so she would drop us off on the side <laughs> and she'd be like i'll be over here to pick you up when school i'll be like okay and i'll be running trying to get away before anybody see that's your mama car <laughs> you know but hey it is what it is that's how it is growing up as kids you know but um yeah so growing up like that and you know your mom not really having a lot and you know, you really taking a lot of like hand me downs or, you know, gifts that people give you because she couldn't. My mom always said, and I don't know if she was telling the truth or not, but she was like, after she paid the rent and we had food stamps for food, but after she paid the rent, she only had four dollars left. I think she said from the check that she got. And sometimes she would go to the grocery store and the people would instead of giving her stamps back for change they would give her cash and oh when they did that we would go to the burger spot <laughs> it was one called young burgers Woo, in inglewood oh my gosh we would have a little 2.99 special you got a giant burger a bunch of fries and a drink for 2.99 and we'd get one and that was a delicacy Woo! <laughs> Telling y'all, I know what struggle is. Shoot, I could tell you some stories. But God always provided for us. And, you know, even though my mom made some decisions that maybe I look back and say I would have did things differently, you know, we all have choices. And, um, I brought all that in to say, you know, with me growing up like that, with me growing up in lack and in poverty in a sense of not having, um, I had my needs met. Now, don't get me wrong. And that's the thing. My needs were met, but a lot of my desires, you know, a lot of the um, delicacies of life that, you know, you want to be able to have or I didn't have that. And so it was a thing where I had to um, 
understand and realize that we all see things differently. So now I'm, you know, an adult. I have a son and my son's closet looks like a grown man closet. Like I, because I can, I do. You know, I could still be in that same mindset. All you need is five pair of pants. All you need is five shirts. Or, all, But I'm able. And, I, you know, I have to do. And I make sure my son does not lack for anything. Um, And it feels good. You know, it really feels good to be able to see him smile. For him to want a computer. And I said, okay, I'll get you a computer. Without even thinking. Excuse me. <laughs> I think if I'd asked my mom for a computer, she probably would have looked at me crazy. <laughs> like, where do you think you go get a computer money from? But to be able, you know, to be able to provide things that you did not have for your child, it feels good. And I get it. And I understand why, you know, parents do what they do because each generation should be better and better. You should have more and more and so you know my sh my son he's very simple he's kind of like i was he doesn't expect a lot and he really doesn't ask for a lot which is a good thing but if he did or if he wanted it it wouldn't be a problem um he's not into jordans and you know all the name brand stuff but i make sure he has you know i'm a comfort person and he's a big big boy so I make sure he have, you know, comfort shoes and he likes Skechers. So I, you know, ain't nothing for me to pay out because Skechers, they not cheap. And I make sure he have a pair every, you know, school, every time school start or whenever he needs shoes, whatever. He have two or three pair and he can switch between. Um, so it's important the decisions that you make because the decisions you make affect yourself and it can affect those around you. So I really believe we need to start taking more responsibility for our choices and our decisions and realize that we are where we are because of the decisions that we make. We can't blame anyone else. We can't um, continue to live this pity life, you know, the victim you got to grow up sometime. You got to suck it up and, you know, make better decisions. You make better decisions, you'll live a better life. With my weight, I could. St I, I don't even want to think of what I would look like now had I not made the decision to get a trainer and start going to the gym and changing my eating habits. I don't even want to think of how I would look. This, you would not see. I promise you that. I probably would be probably about 300, 340, 50, 350, 400 pounds by now. Because I was on my way. And being 4'11", that is not cute. I'm sorry. For me. Now, you may think it's sexy. That is your decision. My decision says... I'm going to stay within the proper weight for my height. And right now, I'm at 131. And I'm still, what they say, technically larger than I'm supposed to be for my height. And so, I'm eating right. I'm eating healthy. I'm not really trying to lose any more weight. Because I really don't want to go back to where I was when I was in my... Well, I was 98 pounds wet <laughs> when I was from the age of 18. Well, I was 91 pounds then, but probably 21, 22, age 22 to like 35, 98 pounds across the board. Never gained, never lost. That was my weight. I'll talk about it at another video, but yeah. Um, after my son was born, that's when I learned about, you know, how women bodies change and how you have to take care of yourself. But it was my decision 
just like it was my decision to get out of a bad relationship it was my decision to realize wait i'm better than this um no nobody's going to talk to me like i have a tail last time i checked i only have two legs um it's a decision it's a choice and the choices in life belong to you no one else can make those choices for you you have to make them for yourself just like i'm going to decide to get my nails done again because i'm tired of them looking like this <laughs> y'all have to excuse me i am like i'm girly but i am my my husband calls me he's like i'm a little tomboy i i can't it's a I'm girly, but then it's like, I just, I'm just, nor I'm natural, I guess you could say. Like, makeup and extras, like, I just started with, like, the hair accessories and stuff. I used to be straight my own hair, braided, flat ironed, wrapped, or um, French roll. That was it. I did not do wigs, weaves extra no only extra i did was braids that was it i just always been a natural person and so um i'm gonna make a decision to get my nails done <laughs> these little nubs is like but i type that's my profession i type so it gets um it's a little difficult sometimes not to i got time so i um yeah, but I am because I like to see pretty on my nails. I like to look at them and you know be pretty, especially with my rings. You know, my jewelry it accessorizes my jewelry, my nails. <laughs> but anyway, I just wanted to come on and you know encourage you guys to make you know realize that your decisions affect your life, and you have the choice what life you live by the decisions you make. All right, so let's make better decisions, and we will definitely live more better and successful lives all right i'll talk to you later see ya love you